welcome to this Midvision Cloud how-to guide. My name is Richard Bettison and today we're going to be looking at how to launch and configure WebSphere network deployment on Amazon Web Services. Okay, so first of all we're going to go and find um, the WebSphere image that we want to launch on AWS. So I'm just going to type into here Midvision AWS into Google. And the first link that comes up is the AWS Marketplace with the Midvision entries. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the right version that I want to launch. And the way these are arranged is um, they're launched in the base, they're, they're arranged in the base versions and types, and then you can select the fixed pack versions once you've selected the main version. So I want to launch um, WebSphere Application Server Network Deployment, so I'm not going to choose the base edition there or Liberty Profile. I'm going to choose Network Deployment and I'm going to choose the latest 8.5 one. So I'm going to click on that link. Uh, and then here I can choose uh, other available versions. So I'm just going to choose the 8558 uh, one, not the 8558 on JDK7. Okay, so I can choose that later. But first I'm going to select my region and I'm going to use the Frankfurt region today. I'm going to choose hourly, not annual, and I'm now going to continue. Okay, so this brings us to the uh, configuration page where I can set some of my settings up. So I'm going to choose an M3 large for this. It's $5.76 an hour to use that. Uh, the version I'm going to choose is that 8558, not on JDK7, so that's actually on JDK6. I'm going to choose uh, M3 large for this. And we recommend that for the WebSphere ND images, particularly if you're putting the deployment manager and the node agent uh, on the same instance, that M3 large is really the smallest uh, that you can get away with. I look at the uh, VPC settings. So uh, we've got East, we've got Central uh, 1A and 1B. So I'm going to uh, choose the 1B setting, which is the um, Frankfurt region. Okay. So now I'm going to look at the security group. Now it says here, create new based on seller settings, and these ports are open. Well, these are actually the correct ports for WebSphere base. For WebSphere ND, because ND communicates on a lot of different ports, what we're going to do is we're going to open all the TCP ports, and I've actually got one here which does that. So it will, it will open uh, all TCP, um, and uh, the reason we need to do that is because base and ND make a lot of communications with each other, and we don't know yet which ports uh, necessarily uh, are going to need opening. So what we're going to do is we're going to protect this on the uh, internal uh, instance firewall later on and we run a script later on which will determine which ports exactly need to be opened. Now I've already got a key pair set which is the Midvision JIR key pair so I'm going to go ahead and use that. So now we can launch this instance. So I'm just going to scroll back up to the top, just review my settings. See here it's going to cost me $5.98 an hour. Sorry, and I'm just going to click accept software terms and launch with one click. Okay, so that's now uh, going to launch. Should receive an email. So um, I've received an email saying that I've been subscribed to that and um, we can see here the uh, subscription. Now if we go to our own EC2 management console, which I've got here and I refresh that, you can see that there is something here that's um, running. I'm going to just give that a name. I'm just going to call it WebSphere ND for now. Okay, so that's now initializing, as you can see here. What I'm now going to do is um, I'm going to assign an Elastic IP address to that. And it's very important that you do this for WebSphere ND. Otherwise, the IP address will change each time you restart the servers, and they won't be able to communicate with each other properly. We cover a lot of this in our documentation online, which I'll direct you to 
at the end of this uh, webcast. But for now, let's go into our Elastic IPs. So we have an unassigned Elastic IP here, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, associate this address. So we've got WebSphere ND here, which I've just selected. Uh, and I'm going to associate that. OK, so that's now associated with the WebSphere ND address. We go back to instances. We can see uh, that address here. OK, so we're now going to connect to the instance either on the command line or um, through the AWS console, console following the launch. I'm going to do it on the command line. So I'm going to type ssh minus i and then I'm going to use the uh, midvision jur pem file. I'm going to connect as the midvision user, which is what we always connect as when we're creating these uh, instances and um, I'm going to use the uh, Elastic IP address that we set up before. Yeah, I'm going to continue connecting. And when we connect for the first time we'll get placed into this um, wizard. So we'll see the uh, banner, Midvision Cloud, and some information about where you can get support. And then we'll get this Welcome to this Dev Test Cloud WebSphere Application Server image first run configuration. You can rerun this configuration wizard at any time by calling the first run setup.sh script in the Midvision home directory. This gives us the option to create a deployment manager, create a node agent, and uh, set the initial password for rapid deploy. And as I mentioned earlier, we can open the ports on the internal uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux firewall. So we might choose to only create a deployment manager, or we might choose to create a deployment manager and a node agent, or we might choose only to create a node agent and federate that with a previously created deployment manager on another instance. Today, and for this demo, I'm just going to create a, what we call WAS in a box, which is the deployment manager and the node agent on the same instance, so that you can see how easy it is to set this up. So I'm going to say yes. So um, we're going to choose the uh, IP address that we want to connect to, and this is in fact the Elastic IP address. Note it says that it's recommended to use the Elastic IP address, otherwise when we restart a new IP address will be chosen. So yes, we'll just accept that as the default. I'm going to accept the default of cello1 as the cell name. I'm going to accept 9060 as the starting port. I'm going to accept wasadmin as the username and password. And I'm going to accept profile of DMGR01. And that's now going to go ahead and uh, create that deployment manager profile. And that might take a few minutes. OK, so that's completed. And now we get asked if we want to create a node agent profile. Uh, I'm going to select yes. So again, we're going to choose the um, Elastic IP address. So we'll accept the default. Uh, starting port. Again, we'll accept the default. Again, we'll accept all of the defaults through here. And we'll accept the default there as well. So we need to set the deployment manager host now. Now, if your deployment manager was running on a separate box, now you would enter the Elastic IP address of that separate instance. But since we're running them all concurrently, uh, the script has detected that and uh, is uh, entering the current public host name of the, the same Elastic IP address. So we're going to accept that. I'm going to accept the SOAP connector port, and if you choose the default ports for all of your instances, then the default SOAP connector port of 9063 will be correct. And again, it's now going to go off and create the node agent profile. That may take a few minutes, so I'm just going to pause this recording while that goes ahead. OK, welcome back. That's also completed. So now I'm asked to uh, configure the password for rapid deploy. So rapid deploy is our uh, deployment automation tool that's uh, supplied with every instance that you run. Um, you may choose to use it or not. But now I'm being prompted to set the password for the user MV admin and I'm just going to submit blank to choose the instance ID. Uh, that will then put some uh, XML up as it's running that and uh, it will say do I want to open the firewall ports for WebSphere application server 
yes I do. Now I can now choose to open individual ports or I can just type the word process which will open all the ports used by WebSphere on this server and it will discover all of the necessary ports and then open them. So again it's going to take a few moments to do that. So it selects each profile in turn. First it's choosing the deployment manager profile, it's going to open all the ports of that and now it's going to choose the application server profile and it's going to open all of the ports in that. Okay, once that's finished we can just simply exit that and then we're finished with the wizard. Okay, so now we get given some connection details that we can connect to, so I'm going to just copy that one. I'm going to go back to uh, my browser I'm going to enter that in the browser. And you'll see that you can immediately just log into the WebSphere Integrated Solutions console. You should apply security as soon as you log in so that you're requested for a username and password. Then you'll need to connect to the HTTPS connection. But just I want to check that everything's working okay. So I'm just going to look at the deployment manager should be okay. You can see the version's 8558 there. Thing here looks fine. Let's have a look at the nodes. So we've got both of the nodes, the deployment manager node and the um, node agent node. They're both running on the same server and they're both uh, synchronized. Okay, so we've now successfully created a WebSphere application server network deployment cell on one box. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you want to find further information, you can simply go to portal.midvision.com. You can select cloud. You can select IBM WebSphere on Amazon Web Services. And in this case, you can just go and have a look at the WebSphere Application Server Network Deployment Edition. We have some other offerings as well that you can explore. And here we'll give you the same kind of overview but uh, in a single page, how you will do these connections. So uh, I'm going to be doing some more of these webinars uh, on WebSphere MQ and WebSphere Application Server Base. So I hope to see you next time, and thank you very much for joining me. Goodbye.